What is going on everyone? My name is Nick and this is Comic Culture and in today's video I'm going to go over a few tips on how to sell books on eBay, what kind of information you want to include in your posts so you can get the most money and be the most transparent with your buyers. So if you're interested in selling books online, stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're talking about how to sell books on eBay or online. And so I have a lot of experience with selling books online pretty successfully. I think we all have a couple horror stories here and there, but the goal is to learn from those lessons so you don't repeat your same mistakes. So I'm going to be using my own personal uh, knowledge here as well as using this Overstreet grading for comic books to help me accurately describe and grade books and, and develop a post. So we're going to go over five key areas when it comes to selling your books on eBay. The first one is the title. Now eBay allows an 80 character limit for the title as of the time of this recording. And so you want to accomplish as much as you possibly can with just those 80 characters. You can obviously start with just the name of the book and the issue number number, but you still probably have a lot of characters left over and you might as well use them to show up on more search results whenever people are looking for books. So while I'm talking, I'm going to have a couple different examples of titles that you can use just to provide some more detail and let me know in the comments which one sounds better to you. So if you have extra room, go ahead and put the year the book was published, maybe the publisher, if it was image, if it was some kind of um, independent publisher, that really helps out a lot. Even if you have a DC Marvel book, you can throw it in there. Put people on the creative team on there and also give your idea of the condition in the description or in the title rather as well. I'll also be providing a little cheat sheet for conditions and how we talk about condition when it comes to comic books. The grading scales versus just like the very fines, near mints, what the correlation between those are. So I'll put that image up as well so you can refer to it later. Now when it comes to pictures, I thought I'd kind of switch it up and show you kind of a first person view of what I'm looking at and the kind of pictures I'm taking when I'm posting a book. So we're going to flip over to that video right now. All right, let's talk about taking pictures. So. On eBay, you're allowed 12 pictures by default, so you can do as many as you want from 1 to 12, but I recommend using all of the 12 slots. Because, you know, the more pictures you have, the more detail you can give to the buyer, right? So what I would recommend doing is go out and just buy one of these, like, cardstock, one of these poster boards from Walmart or wherever. They're pretty, pretty cheap. They allow a high contrast between the book and the background, so you can kind of highlight some of the areas we're going to go over here in a second. So the first thing I would probably do is I would probably go ahead and go and get a full uh, full front shot right here, kind of showcasing the entire book and as one. Don't worry about any kind of glare or anything, any kind of light glare that you're trying to achieve with future shots. You just want to give a full shot and just kind of show them what the book is. You can go ahead and do that with the back as well, um, but you just want to kind of give them a full picture of what they're getting at. The next thing I would focus on was I would go down into the corners down here and I would try to get a close up with focus on each of the corners. Now you could achieve that by also showing a little bit of the spine over here and a little bit of the bottom as well. So you can get in close enough to see the condition of the spine and you can kind of show them the bottom and this side as well. And then you can go down here and grab these corners too, making sure that it focuses every single time. And so obviously we have a defect right there. We're going to highlight in our, in our comments. And then we can grab our other corner over here as well. So now we have a full shot of the front and back. We've highlighted the corners just to make sure everything's good. The next thing I would do is I would go ahead and get the spine. So as you can see, we can, we can accomplish a couple different things all together here. We can not only get the spine, but we can get the staple as well. So make sure you're getting it in focus, take a picture of that, and then work your way down. You can typically get this done in about two pictures. If you're zoomed in enough or backed up enough in this thing, you can get a picture of that right there. What else, what else it does is if you have your light source in front of you, it creates this glare right here that people can use to see if there's any kind of defects or any creases, right? So you can see there's probably some fingerprints right about there. It's a black cover, so fingerprints are real easy to pick up. But there's not a whole lot of creases or anything like that. There might be something right there. It's kind of hard to tell. Can you, I don't know if you can see that or not right there. There might be something going on there. It might be more of like a little bit of a wave. It's definitely not a crease necessarily. 
but you can see tons of fingerprints because I've been I've been touching this a little bit here and there. So now we have the full front, we got the corners, we got the spine. The next thing I would work on is maybe getting a shot of the inside. While we're jumping on the inside, I did notice something when I opened this page right here. That bend that we saw on the front corner, right there, has transferred into the inside pages. So you wanna make sure to highlight that in your, in your description. And then we have this other weird uh, kind of a defect right there too on the, one of the inside pages. And as we flip, it kind of goes away right, right around there. Um, so there's a little bit of a something, a little bit of a bend, but as we work our way through the pages, that goes away. Also, I want to highlight once we get in the inside here, this isn't the center fold necessarily, but we have this weird thing going on right here in the middle as well. So that's another interesting thing to, to remember. So you kind of want to work your way through, kind of highlight all those little imperfections like that as you're going through the book. And I'm trying to do this while filming at the same time, but I wouldn't normally be this jerky with it. But it's okay, this is my book. And then here is our back cover. Again, you can kind of highlight any kind of smudges or anything like that. This is a white cover on the back. So there's bound to be some color rub off here and there, some dirt kind of right there. So you just want to be ultra, ultra transparent. There even some, there's even some spine, some spine areas there. If you get into the light the right way, there they are right there, right? There's at least, what, four? One, two, three, four. Those three are obvious. That's a little less obvious, but I see them and there's some more stuff up there. <clears throat> so you can't always go off of what the front looks like. You got to flip it around to and, and take a look at the back cover because that can reveal all sorts of different kinds of things. So how would you feel if you were a buyer and all you saw was the front of this book and maybe the seller said, hey, there's a little tiny bend right there. There's a little, a little earmark right there, but otherwise it's near mint. Nothing's wrong with the book. It's in perfect condition. You get it. You come inside. A third of the pages have that transferred over to it. It's full of fingerprints. The spine's intact, but then you flip it over and you have all these dents and color marks and stuff like that. And then you have a back corner with that right there. Let me know in the comments below what you would, how you would feel if you saw this and all this stuff as a surprise on the back. Would you be disappointed? Would you contact the seller? I'd like to know where your tolerance level is for descriptions like that. So let me know. So once we have our title figured out and we've taken some really, really good pictures, we're going to move over to the description of the book next. So in this field, we have a little bit more room to work with so we can add a lot more information inside. Just like the titles, I'm going to have some descriptions floating by so you can check out the differences between a really mediocre, barely any information kind of a description to something that has a lot more description about the actual comic book. So in the description, I really like to use the format that the Overstreet Guide to Grading Comics uses when it comes to the grade description. Um, if you have this book, you can flip to it and you can kind of see how they break it down. They go over not only what the book is, obviously, and the issue number and the publishers, that's always good. But we're talking about the description of the book at this point, not necessarily what the book is, but would you describe how you describe the condition. So the way that they typically do it here is they, they go over everything from the cover, the exteriors, the corners, uh, the binary defects, the spines, staples, and the pages or interior of the books, right? So our pictures are going to highlight some of those issues. It's going to give them a visual representation, obviously, of the condition of the book. But in the description is where we're going to highlight all the pros and the cons of the book so that the buyer has a complete understanding of what they're buying. So don't be afraid to provide too much detail in this area of the post, because if, especially if it's a really expensive book, a couple hundred dollars, even if it's just like a 50 or $30 book, the more detail, the better, especially when it's highlighting defects. Because the last thing you want to do is ship this book out with an understanding that the book was perfect. And when the buyer gets it, there's some kind of an issue with the book and they're going to be asking for a refund. 
So next we're going to get into how you're going to be shipping your book once it's sold. So the standard right now is inside of a comic book bag and backed with the backboard here as well. Um, I've seen it also wrapped in a little tiny thin layer of bubble wrap, although it's not necessary, and inside of a comic Gemini mailer. So I'll have a picture up here to what a standard mailer looks like. They're pretty inexpensive. They're like $1.25, maybe up to $2, depending on the brand or the, or the thickness of the cardboard you use. But, you know, inside of a comic mailer, uh, taped up securely inside of that comic mailer and then secured as well is pretty much the standard and you should be fine shipping your book that way. One thing I like to do to keep the comic book from shifting around inside of the Gemini mailer is don't just limit yourself to one board. Go ahead and put it inside of the bag and board and then put another board on top of the cover facing side. And then you can secure that down inside the Gemini mailer with some blue painters tape in four points. Um, so that will keep it from kind of jittering around inside there. If you're putting it in there and it's a little loose, go ahead and just do that. It'll be fine. So lastly, we're going to go over cost. eBay is going to probably go ahead and give you an estimation of what the comic has sold for in the past, but go ahead and do your own research, follow the market trends, search for that book in eBay by sold listings, just to kind of get an idea of where it is. You know, be cognizant of the condition of your book and the other books that have sold recently. If you have a chewed up copy, and a near mint copy sold for a hundred bucks, you're not gonna sell that one for a hundred bucks. It'll be a fraction of that cost probably. So be realistic with your pricing and then also go look at the options eBay has for how to sell a book. And what I mean by that is there's typically three different options. There's a buy it now, there's a typical auction where it lasts for seven days or 30 days perhaps, and there's also a best offer option. So buy it now and best offer are really good if you're trying to get, get rid of the book pretty quickly. If you have a little bit of time and you're, you, you kind of want to fish for the highest bidder, you can go ahead and use the auction setting as well and then add a buy it now just to kind of entice people to pull the trigger early if they want to. This is where I like to think about my shipping costs as well, because in, in my experiences, those Gemini mailers cost somewhere around eight to ten, twelve dollars, depending on how many books you're putting in there um, to ship out. So if you're selling a book, a single issue book, you can probably go ahead and put about nine dollars shipping on that, and that will cover the cost of the Gemini mailer, and that will cover the cost of the shipping and everything like that. Um, you can kind of play around with those numbers a little bit here and there, but it's usually not too great for a seller to sell a book and charge like $15 for shipping when we all know it costs less than that to ship it. I really hope that these tips helped you on being more confident when you're selling a book on eBay. If you've been selling books on eBay or even buying books a lot on eBay and you have your own mental checklist that you go through when you're posting or when you're looking for a book, and I didn't cover them in this video, put them down below in the description because it's gonna be great for people to see the video, pick up some tips and go down below and see what else you guys have to offer. If you have any questions about the tips that I did today, go in the comments and let me know. And while you're down there, hit the like button, the subscribe button and ding, ding, ding that notification bell for future videos. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. And I will see you in the comments.